I'd like to start with a few questions. I'm going to make it really easy. It's sort of analog. You know, raise your hand. You know, lower your hand. I just want to sort of um, start start there. It's easier because I'm asking the questions, so I you know it's less intimidating for me. Um, so the first question is, how many of you had really great business during COVID? I mean, how many of your businesses really boomed and really did well? So it's about about half, right? How many of you anticipated that we would be on lockdown for a year? Yeah. So when, when I asked my team at the beginning of COVID, when we were all sent home, I said, you know, how, how many of you, how, how long do you think it's going to be before we're back in the office? And they said, two weeks, 10 days. One person on my team, a French guy, said, not until we have a vaccine. And he was right. He was right. So... Um, I think as we, as we start to look at the world, things are going to be accelerating and changing really, really rapidly. And I want to share with you a project that we worked on in 2016 that really changed my mindset around thinking about the future. And it's really opened me up to be able to think and anticipate and see these kinds of changes. Um, and so I want to share that with you. It's not the details that I'm going to go through today that's going to be important for you. But it's the mindset and the approach. All of the ideas that I'm going to share with you were very specific to a shopping center business. Some of it will translate to the retailer business, but not all of it will. So Ideas have this sort of trajectory to them, and we have this sort of ability to aim at an idea. And what's happening in the world is these ideas are happening faster and faster. And so you have your apparatus, you have your team, you have your process, and you aim for the idea. And if you're familiar with the business, world of the blue oceans or the Red Sea, right? So you hope that you're aiming at an idea that sits in the blue ocean and you have a bit of time to digest it, get ahead of the rest of the curve and move forward. But in reality, what's happening today for lots of reasons that I won't get into, but social media is a big one, is your apparatus is still aiming the same way. You're just hitting the idea after it's matured. And so the ideas are not going to stick, you're not going to be as successful with the ideas, and you're entering into the market in the Red Sea. Everyone else is already there, social media has already exposed this new idea, and you're going to hit it in the Red Sea. And so it's much, much harder to be successful with a new idea. And this is not just ideas, it's processes, it's new software tools, it's everything that you look at. And so what our project attempted to do was look at ideas down at the bottom of the blue ocean. How do you start to see ideas before they emerge? And in our project, this became the cornerstone of our thought process. The future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. And so every, all of these new ideas, the new ideas of tomorrow, are already being worked on. The guys at Google are working on driverless cars. And so we called up the guys at Google and talked to them about driverless cars. New technology is already here. It's just not emerged. It's not, just, it's not distributed yet. And so if you can start to find those ideas, then you start to create this pathway for thinking about new ideas. So in our, in our team effort, we had 10 people working on this project. We went through every single idea that was going to change the shopping center world, everything we could think of. We met for six months and we went through and we found all of these ideas. Behind each one of these dots is a white paper that talks about all of these different ideas. So driverless cars, virtual reality, new technology, uh, how products are going to change, the global economy, all of these different things. And so we had hundreds and hundreds of ideas. Um, and that was the start. That was the first phase of our project. We then needed to narrow down those ideas that were going to make sense for our business and figure out which ones of these ideas were going to actually emerge. And so we used this lens. You could use any lens. This was the one that we used. So we looked at the regulators. You know, how easy is it going to be to get this product approved? Are the providers of this product going to be profitable? Are they going to make any money at it? Is it going to be easy to produce? And do consumers want it? And so we looked at every idea through this sort of three-part lens. And the ones that landed in the center were ripe for us to pay attention to. And so that was really where we started to concentrate our, our thought process. And at the end of the process, we built the shopping center of the future on the 11 trends that I will get to shortly here. So there were 11 transformational trends that came out of those 100 ideas that we thought were relevant for us to pay attention to in the shopping center business. 
So these are the trends. I'll walk through these all really briefly. I'll touch on a few in a little bit more detail. The first is everything is gonna become smaller. So there's a, there's a paradigm here as well, where as things start to get smaller, as we start to condense our retail, some things will get bigger. So the store might get bigger, but you'll have fewer of them but your footprint's gonna become smaller. And so you're starting to see that. You know, Walmart has a small store, a city store. City Target has a small store. Bloomingdale's just opened a Bloomies, which is one-tenth the size of the square footage that it used to have, and it predicts that it's gonna do almost the same amount of sales out of that smaller footprint. So we're seeing everything become much, much smaller. This idea that the shopping experience will be customized, I think this is a really important one for retailers to pay attention to. I think everyone wants to purchase something that is unique, that is tailored to them. And we're seeing that with things like Warby Parker that are doing eyeglasses, uh, everything that's really customized, one-off, something you can't purchase everywhere. Virtual versus visceral. This is a very interesting one, and I'll share one story here that may relate um, to some of the things that you're working on. But we met with this, guy, uh, this person called Guy Hoffman who uh, invents robots. Right? He invents the now robot and some other robots. And he did this experiment with two sets of robots, and they were going to be musicians, and they were going to play music with real musicians. So in one side of it, he had these robots just play mechanically perfect music, and they would collaborate with real artists. And in that scenario, the artist said it was the most miserable, horrible experience they'd ever had because they felt like they were trying to keep up with the robots. In the other scenario, he engineered the robots to have sympathy and empathy. So the robot would look over at the musician, nod its head, start to play a few notes, play a few more notes, and then adapt. And the musicians came back and said, this is the most amazing musical experience I've ever had. So it's faking it, right? It's faking it. But that's what technology is going to start doing. It's going to start emulating human behavior and human experience. Um, so that's where this sort of virtual visceral is going to go. It's going to really transform um, all of this technology. So we were watching, there's so much interesting stuff in that, in that category. Um, retail, we are seeing in the shopping center industry, certainly what we are seeing is that retail is now more mobile. Retail is more pop-up. Retail is more about experience. And so retail is going to come to you. You're starting to see it with, you know, helicopters delivering pizzas and uh, Uniqlo opening up a shipping container in New York City. Um, so retail it no longer has this physical presence. That's a big danger for a shopping center business. Experience is the most valuable commodity. I think that's, we're going to see that more and more. Everything will become smaller except for your data. I think we've all been sharing a lot of data. I think we share it comfortably. As long as we get benefit out of sharing our data, we'll continue to do it. But very soon, we're going to be paying a tremendous amount for our privacy. And I think that's going to be a, a change that we're going to see. In the shopping center industry, we're always trying to collect data. The shopping center would love to be Amazon with a data stream that tells everything that everybody's purchasing all the time so we can anticipate it. But um, I think eventually, we're going to start hiding our data. Wearable technology. This is one I'm, I'm very, very interested in, and I've seen a lot of transformation in the last five years in wearable technology. Um, a very interesting uh, guy here, Neil Harbison. He was born colorblind, can only see in black and white. And he engineered for himself a little chip that went into his skull and a little third eye that when he pointed it at a color, it would create a sound. So he now hears color. And it changed his world. He can now see ultraviolet light. He can see spectrums of light that humans can't see. He hears them. So he's got a really great TED talk. I encourage you to, to, to look at it if you're, you're interested. But that's demonstrating a shift. We all carry technology with us all the time now. We all have a cell phone that tracks us and that monitors us. You know, it's, it's everywhere. We're starting to wear it. The Apple Watch was like the first time that we're going to wear technology. And for people that have medical needs, you've implanted pacemakers and other kinds of technology into your body. This is going to accelerate. And we're going to start using technology not just as a, an overlay of information, but actually as a competitive advantage. Right? I mean, you see it in some of the sci-fi movies. I really believe it's true. Google Glass was probably 
25 years ahead of its, uh, its time, right? It was like, they called it the glass hole, right? Like, you know, just no one wanted to be looked at with this technology, but it will, it will happen and it will, uh, it will evolve. And I think very, very soon we're gonna start to use technology as a competitive advantage, implanted technology. What does that mean for shopping centers? What does it mean for products? What does it mean for retailers? Uh, lots of questions there. Driverless cars, um, I'm really bullish on driverless cars. I've lost lots of bets on how uh, quickly this was gonna transpire. Uh, hasn't transpired nearly as quickly as I thought it was. Um, but I'm super excited about it. Um, I think it's the one solution for traffic. Uh, it changes how people behave in the world if you have driverless cars. Uh, everything will be connected. I mean, we're seeing that now. I have so many Wi-Fi devices in my house, it's unbelievable. You don't realize how much of your Wi-Fi band is being used by your light bulbs and your thermostat and your kids' iPads and your phones. And then before you know it, you've got 75 devices connected to your Wi-Fi and you wonder why it's not working. Um, but everything's going to be connected. And so I, <laughs> everything's going to be connected. Um, from a retailer standpoint, I think this is, is a real challenge. And I, I think the, our responsibility to the globe and to... Um, the environment may push this more and more, but eventually I don't think we'll own anything. I think everything will be leased. You know, clothing, will, there will be a responsibility on a clothing manufacturer to take the full cycle of that clothing and recycle it when they're done with it. You'll put that burden of cost onto the retailers. It's their responsibility. They've produced the item. It's their responsibility to see that through to the end. And so eventually you won't own anything. I think, you know, houses, you, you start to see the Airbnbs. You can live in one place for, for a period of time. You can go somewhere else. Tools, I don't use tools. I don't buy my own tools anymore. I rent the tools I need for the project, and then I return them. And then my data, I no longer have floppy disks at home. It's all stored in the cloud. So I think all of these kinds of things will own less stuff. But the stuff we do own will be more precious. And so from a retailer's perspective, you know, how do we create those really precious things that we own. So those were the 11 trends that we came up with. And that was, we did that in 2016. And what it did for me was um, sort of lay the groundwork of connections, people, relationships that I could rely on and I could start to see as things were going to emerge quickly or things were gonna emerge slowly. But the company was a little, uh, Westfield was a little like, well, I'm, we're not sure what we do with this. Uh, Trevor, how do you translate this into something meaningful that we can actually act on? And so the, the following year, we went through and looked at five very tangible things we could do as a shopping center company. So I'll go through those very briefly. The first one is this idea of mixed use. I mean, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. Every other country has got mixed use as the core of their business. It's just the way cities grow. It's like you have housing, you have hotels, you have offices, you have retail. It's all mixed. In the US, we're very segregated with how we've developed projects. You have a shopping center surrounded by parking. Well, everything we're looking at now is mixed use. It's about how do you bring residential hotel office into that environment and create a real destination. And you're starting to see that with some of these campuses for large companies where they have an entire ecosystem for their employees on that one campus. This is very similar. This is sort of the layered experience. And so, you know, instead of just providing a shopping experience, it's a food experience. Um, it's a, an opportunity to create. It's an opportunity to bring novelty and experience um, for the customers. <laughs> Landmark art, I think we've seen this happen more and more. And this is the idea of memorable moments, Instagrammable moments. It's connecting your physical experience with the digital experience. So we're seeing that everywhere in New York City, the, um, the giant chalice that was built there by Heatherwick, uh, an amazing sort of iconic element that will have the same sort of transformational power in the long run as the Eiffel Tower does in Paris. Um, so we're starting to see those kinds of things. And every single one of our projects now has this art component as a piece of it. Entertainment, I mean, we, we saw last night, right? Going on a safari and having an amazing meal next to the safari, that is a memorable experience. And I think that's what's so amazing about this Retail Spaces Conference and the way that it's set up, is it's got some content to it, but it's also got the memorable experience. And that's the part that you'll remember, that's the part that you'll take with you. And so, in a shopping center environment and in a store environment, how do you create that for your customers? Because that's what they'll remember. 
The product will come and go, but it's the memory of, of what they've created that will last. The idea of technology, and we, we talked a little bit about this with the robotics and sort of kind of finding a way to do that. Another really interesting example was this company called uh, Yi Hao Dian. And overnight, through their digital technology, they were an online retailer. Overnight, they opened, I think it was 600 grocery stores on the doorsteps of their competitor through an augmented reality. So outside of all of these grocery stores, you saw people with their phones, augmented reality, buying stuff. And so overnight, they were able to, able to open 600 stores. I mean, how, how do you do that if you don't use this augmented reality? I think that, that uh, product was actually purchased by uh, Walmart. So um, this idea that you know, technology, how do you use it effectively to create experiences? With that, uh, if we try hard enough, we will invent the future. So that's, uh, that's my story. Um, I really think what this did for me, you can go out and hire experts to give you insights into the business, but what this did for me is it laid down a groundwork of thinking about the world, and now when a new VR product comes out, I'm already primed to see it. I already am aware of it, and I know who to call. And so that's the kind of network, collectively, that I think we should all be building as we go forward. Thank you, Trevor. I think we have a couple, two or three minutes, if anyone has a question that they'd like to ask. Carlos Moreno created this thing called the 15 Minute City. Yeah. that now the mayor of Paris is, is implementing. And I was talking about it yesterday a little bit, and it kind of struck me as really sort of a combination of, of everything you've been talking about. Very much Have so. you guys been talking about that at all? Because Ab Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because it's really kind of a, a almost the next step to where we were at with, like Easton Town Center in Columbus. I know that well. Is like that far from a 15 minute city. You yeah. live there, you shop there, you work yeah. there, you have schools there. So yeah, been... we actually ha had a, a group that was looking specifically at the, the 15 minute city. Now in Europe it works differently because people walk and the scale of communities are different. Unfortunately, or fortunately in the US, so many things were driven by the automobile, which just sort of pushed that 15 minute city to be a driving 15 minute. Um, but we are looking at micro cities. We see the shopping center environments, certainly the best shopping center environments as the hub of that 15 minute city. And so how do we transform what is a shopping center surrounded by parking into exactly what you're talking about, this 15-minute city. Trevor Pollard, thanks so much. Thank